In today's strength and flexibility workout, I'm working towards a handstand push-up and a one-arm pull-up, but I've had some torn muscles in my right shoulder, so I've had to modify the way that I do my workouts to deal with that. And I'm also dealing with a little bit of golfer's elbow. So this workout is designed to create structural balance, deal with those injuries, but also be progressing me towards my goals. And I'm also gonna be doing some middle splits training. Today's workout is when I do my middle splits, so let's get into it. All right, I'm starting with a 4-3-2-1 warm-up. So four reps at about 50% of what I'm gonna lift for my first set. And you might notice that I'm wearing one kilo wrist weights today. And I'm doing that because I wanna use progressive overload and I wanna go up in weight, but I only wanna do it a little bit. I don't wanna go from 20 kilograms or 44 pounds up to, oh, whoops. I don't wanna go up to uh, 22 and a half in one jump just because I'm dealing with this shoulder injury. So I want to make that better and I want to do it nice and safe. So I'm just going to go up one kilogram, which is 5% uh, of the weight lifted, nice and safe, but still using progressive overload. And so I start on a weight that is about 50% of what I'm going to lift, a little bit more. And then I just do four reps, then I go up a bit, then three reps, then up a bit, then two reps. And then my last jump up, I'm now gonna be on the weight that I'm gonna be lifting with for today's workout. So 20 kilos or 44 pounds plus my one kilo weight which is two and a half pounds, so 46 and a half pounds. <clears throat> All right, and now I'll go and warm up my pull-ups. For my pull-ups, I'm using these Ken Soy Swissies. There's a link in the description if you want them. And I will explain to you why I'm using those after I do this first warm-up set when I'm resting and waiting for my first set of shoulder press. <clears throat> I'm using those Swissies because they have those paddles and the paddle, what it does is it allows you to rest your wrist on there so you're not relying so much on, on the wrist. It's kind of, it basically deloads the wrist. And because I'm dealing with golfer's elbow, golfer's elbow is all about continuing to do what you do, but managing the load on the wrist flexors. So by deloading the wrist, I can you know, continue to do pull-ups um, with you know, not too much of a problem. So that's why I'm using those. And now I can get ready for my first set. And I'm doing these shoulder presses because, you know, when I got this injury in my shoulder a couple of weeks ago, it revealed an imbalance from left to right side. And doing pike push ups, which is what I was doing working towards handstand push ups, not a good way to deal with um, structural balance issues. It's very easy to just focus on your strong side when you do calisthenics, but you can't do that with dumbbells. And this is still working the same muscles. And then for my rest period, I get my timer on and I go straight into a stretch for my lower body. And so I'm starting with a couch stretch because 
my hip flexors are really tight. They're a tight part of my body. Even though today my primary flexibility movement is the middle split, it's the, uh, I just start with a little bit of hip flexor work. Oh, it is really hot today. This is going to be a very sweaty workout. Okay. Wrist weights. You know, it is, it is tough working at this pace, like going from one strength exercise straight into a flexibility movement and not just rest and, you know, focus on strength training. But the alternative is that you don't do flexibility between sets. You just do strength training like everybody else does. And then you get really, really strong or really buff, but you don't get flexible. And... I don't want that. We don't like that. Yeah. My brother and I, we both trained, you know, just for the things that we wanted to train for for years and we just developed imbalanced bodies. It wasn't until we started training for strength and flexibility in the same workout that we started to create some balance, you know, strength and flexibility. So it's tough. Workouts could be easier, but they're rewarding. All right, I'm going to try 
<coughs> seven and a half kilos for these today. And I don't know how I'm gonna go because six was tough. But I think I got 10 reps last time. So I'm just gonna try it. It's a supplementary lift, so if I fail, it's not that bad. <coughs> Good. And now I'm <coughs> into my middle splits training. So this is my first middle splits exercise. <sighs> oh, my groin feels pretty tender. I guess, uh, I guess I must have done some good flexibility training last week because I'm still feeling it today. And then a few contractions in my glutes to try to strengthen that end range. Very hard in this position to contract the glutes properly. And then I go straight from the flexibility back to the strength. It's not a lot of rest, but <clears throat> it's a really good way to get strong and flexible when you combine it together like this. <clears throat> Good. I'm really happy that I'm getting seven and a half kilos. That's a that's a decent jump up. So that's good. And my shoulders feeling less twingy this week as well. So the tears are almost healed. Muscle tears usually only take about three to six weeks to heal. They can heal in as little as two weeks for a minor tear. So if you do a good, if you follow a good rehab program, if you know how to adjust your workouts to accommodate muscle tears like what I've done, you can get over them pretty quickly. And motion is lotion. Rest is not best when it comes to muscle tears. It is absolutely best to strength train them and stimulate growth because otherwise your muscles atrophy. to the chest and the posterior deltoids <clears throat> and I'm going to try going up in weight 
with these two as well. I hope I didn't go too close to my shelf. That's all right. I'll just drop down in the next set. But I didn't get eight reps, so which is what my target is for this program. All right, this is a, another exercise for the middle splits. This is an end range contraction for the glutes. <clears throat> Triceps, triceps, and middle splits training now. I've succumbed to the heat. It is so damn hot in here. Or here, I should say, not just in here. I've put my mini air conditioner on for the first time this whole summer. First workout. <laughs> I'm just dripping. And it's horrible. I got through nine weeks of summer without it. And in the last three weeks, I've caved. doing is a superset here for the middle splits and first I'm doing a an end range contraction so when I was out there hanging from the bars gravity was working against me now gravity is working with me and I'm contracting my glutes hard and I'm getting cramps in my toes that. We'll do it like that. One more. 
I'm doing, I'm contracting my glutes as hard as I can there to try to increase end range strength. And then I go into an active middle split, which I need my timer for. First round, you never go to your full potential. That's how you hurt yourself. Oh man. Oh, that's tough. Okay. Just record my reps for the triceps. And then round two. <clears throat> Oh, give me some of that cool air. Eight. Okay. So doing a superset like this is really good for flexibility because it helps to hack the nervous system by delaying and inhibiting some of the sensory neurons that prevent flexibility.
Come on. Ah. All right, into my rotator cuff work. It's such a good exercise for shoulder injuries and to prevent shoulder injuries. See what I can do with this grip crusher. Oh, I'm pretty buggered at this stage of the workout. Been going for an hour and 45 minutes. I got seven. Strong side, always easier. But that's how you work out imbalances. You train. Uh, you train for the weak side, and the strong side, and the weak side catches up to the strong side. But if you train for the strong side, you always outdo the weak side. The weak side will never catch up and the gap will grow between the, the strength difference between the strong side and the weak side. Okay, I'm getting sweaty again so I'm gonna need to put this on my knee to stop that. I'm slipping. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Get it done. <clears throat> oh. I'm going to do one eccentric rep on my weak side one extra one as a hybrid set just to really help bridge that gap in strength between the strong side and the weak side because my right side is so much stronger with this with grip strength i've got over 10 years of Kung Fu training where I was swinging a sword and a staff in one in the right hand and that right arm just got so much more developed than the left side. I wish I knew now. I wish I knew then what I know now. I would have really been working on structural balance while I was doing all that weapon work. And then speaking of structural balance, this is the antagonistic movement to grip crushing. So this is what you do to create balance in the hands between finger flexion and finger extension. Okay. All right, last round of this one. Come on. Oh, that's it. Oh, God. Come on. Pure grit that gets you through this stage of a workout. You just gotta dig your heels in and go. Come on. I feel so weak. Ah! 
Ah, oh, come on. Ah. These are all the kinds of exercises that I just never did when I was younger. All I did was compound exercises like pull-ups and shoulder press and things like that. And when I say younger, I mean when I was in my mid-30s, I barely did anything before that. It was all Kung Fu training. But when I started learning about calisthenics and wanting to get good at it, I was about 35 and I just didn't do any of this stuff. I didn't see the value in it. I didn't... Uh, believe that it was worth my time and boy I was wrong all right wrist flexion and wrist extension now god I'm dripping even with the air conditioner on Oh, those are brutal. Especially with those 12 and a half kilo weights. Okay. All right. Oh my god, again my left side, so much weaker on that exercise. It's, uh, I feel that quite a bit up there, which is where you feel tennis elbow, and that's what I'm feeling a little bit on this arm when I do the neutral grip bicep curls. So, it's, uh, you know, it's all about just taking care of these things and turning weaknesses into strengths, which you can do if you follow a structured program like what I'm doing. If you watch my videos regularly, you'll notice that I follow a program. I'm not doing random workouts. It's very methodical. Four-week mesocycles, repeating the same, so different workouts Monday to Friday, but repeating the same workouts for four weeks, and then I change some variables. In periodization, you can change the tempo that you're lifting at, you can change the weight you're lifting, which also means you change the reps you're doing, you can change the amount of sets you do, you can change the exercise selection, and you can change the rest between exercises. And any of those five things, you change any of them, that's periodization. And you can change any of them, or all of them, or some of them. So, that's our uh, 
periodization works and when you when you follow a structured periodized program with the intention to you know fix injuries that uses progressive overload you'd be amazed at what you can fix in your body <clears throat> set I wasn't able to maintain good technique on that set okay oh my god my arms are on fire One more round. Oh man, everything just hurts now. I'm really hitting my arms hard in this program phase because the weak link for me at the moment, which is why I've got golfer's elbow, is the wrist flexors and the biceps. They're the weak links in my arm in the, in the kinetic chain of pulling. So when I try and do single arm pulling, the bicep isn't strong enough and it's putting way too much, like it's transferring. If the bicep's not strong enough, it tries to create the movement however it can with the muscles above and below in the kinetic chain. And so my bicep isn't strong enough, so it's all just going into my forearms and my back and my back's doing fine, but the forearms are just dying. So I'm really hammering my biceps in this next couple of phases. Uh, I did five sets of bicep curls today, which is, a lot more than what I normally do and I'm you know hitting these uh, wrist flexions so hopefully another one or two mesocycles which is four weeks for me hopefully that's going to be enough to fix it me <laughs> oh god it's a deep burn <sighs> oh. all right come on let's get there let's go all she wrote i'm done i'll see you in tomorrow morning's handstand hanging on flow workout and if you haven't done so yet please subscribe to my channel help me hit that goal of 100,000 subscribers this year and share this video with your friends if you got some value out of it i'll see you in tomorrow's session